So uh, this is one of the questions in your problem set uh, due tonight. And um, I picked this one up because it uh, gives a treatment for ener energy, momentum conservation that, um, that we don't often do in this class, but I, one that I want you to have in the back of your mind. This is the situation where um, you look at collision happening in full, um, full two-dimensional space. Well, no. well, in two-dimensional space. So many of the examples we go, go over, and frankly, homework and exam questions deal with a, a one-dimensional collision, collision along a line, and that's partly because that's uh, easier, and it allows us to focus on other aspects, but it's this is calculus-based physics. <laughs> a lot of things we do have application to the real world. And 2D is a closer representation of the real world than 1D is. So let's do this one question so that um, you can't say we have never done collisions in 2D. So let me read, uh, I probably should have read it before starting this uh, virtual class session, but let me read it now and we'll just do this in real time. A uh, billiard ball labeled once, I have one billiard ball, moving horizontally strikes another billiard ball. So I have a ball one that's moving horizontally. Let me just have it move to the right. And I guess it has some initial speed if we not. Uh, strikes another billiard ball labeled two at rest. Um, let's see. I guess I want to draw it a little bit below because I'm reading ahead to something about the 50 degrees of thing. So ball two, which is at rest initially, and it's a saying it was moving at speed of 2.8 meters per second. So that's giving me what I'm labeling as V naught. Uh, and after impact, it is moving at 0 0.5 meters per second. Okay, so I need to draw another picture here. So I'm uh, drawing a post-collision picture. So after collision, let's say this is a representation of ball one moving in this direction. Oops, uh, that seems a little bit too high. I'm moving in this direction. It's close enough. And let me call this a V1. So this uh, 0 0.1 meters per second will be my V1. And um, I guess I can label this as theta one, and this will be the 50 degrees. Okay, from the original direction, if the two balls have equal masses, oh, that makes things easier, if they both have mass m, uh, it'll make algebra easier especially. Equal masses of 300 gra grams, what is the velocity of the ball two after the impact? express the velocity oh, at the, as a magnitude at an angle below the horizontal. So the ball two will be going in some direction. And what we are being asked for is V2, question mark, and theta two, question mark. Okay. So uh, if you look at the hint um, in the myopo method, you will see this uh, referring to um, how, how many unknowns you have, how many equations you need, and where you can get those equations from. And uh, given the chapter it's in, you should be able to get it from conservation of momentum. So uh, what you should do is take a little bit of a pause, a minute or so, uh, look at the situation fully, look at this situation fully, and convince yourself that momentum is conserved in this interaction. So there are things that you should watch out for, as in, is there any net external force acting for long enough of a duration that imparts a net impulse? And you know, look at that and convince yourself that no, nothing like that is happening. So all the interaction involved is you, uh, with the internal forces here. So net momentum is conserved. So once you've convinced yourself of that, then you need to set up the conservation equation. So you are using conservation of momentum. And 
you are writing down basically this equation that net momentum, the total initial momentum added all added together is equal to the total final momentum. And when we are dealing with a one dimensional problem, this vector quantity here doesn't have all that much of a meaning other than sometimes you have quantity that's being a plus or minus. Uh, now here, the vector actually has that directional meaning because we are dealing with a two dimensional interaction here. And the thing I would recommend is um, introduce a coordinate axis. So here, um, introducing the coordinate axis. What color should I use? I haven't used this. Uh, this should be your coordinate axis. Uh, this should be your coordinate axis, x and y. And so horizontal and I guess not horizontal. <laughs> and um, using this uh, coordinate, um, this uh, uh, one single vector equation should be broken down into components. So you have one equation expressing conservation of momentum for the x component, and a second equation expressing conservation of momentum for the, um, for the y component. So let's write that down. So, um, so the net momentum for the uh, Init x initial of the x component of momentum is equal to the net x components of final momentum. That's one equation. So this is kind of a more of a symbolic representation reminder, and we'll flash this out um, late uh, in a little bit. Um, the second equation is expressing the basically the same thing for the y component, and we'll. Uh, write it out in detail uh, after I've written out this symbolic <laughs> representation. Okay, let's write it out in detail. So for the net initial x component of momentum, initially of the balls one and two, only ball one is moving, so only this contributes any initial momentum at all. So it looks like initially it's going in the positive x direction at speed of v naught. So my initial x component of momentum should be plus and v naught. And that's it. No other moving thing, no other thing that has momentum in the x direction. So that should be equal to, for the final state, the post-collision states here, I have two things moving. So I need to account for momentum of those two things. And looking at the angles and everything drawn here, um, so this is the right triangle that I'm looking at, and this is the right triangle that I'm looking at. So it looks like the x component should be v1 cosine theta 1, and x component here should be v2 cosine theta 2. And for the time being, I'll just write down the expressions without worrying about if I know the quantities or not. I'll do the check after I've written down the equations. So I have mv1 cosine theta 1, of, I guess still plus if I want to indicate the direction, plus mv2 cosine theta 2. Um, all right. Uh, I guess that's it all for the X uh, component. For the Y component, even since the uh, ball one is all moving horizontally initially, there's a net zero momentum initially. That actually makes our job uh, quite a bit easier since our initial momentum in the Y direction is zero. We can say, um, um, we can say, um, M, V1, this component, Y component here, looking at this triangle, it should be V1 sine theta two, I sorry, theta one, opposite direction, and V1 sine theta one. And here I'm going to write the sine, uh, uh, S-I-G-N, <laughs> sine into my uh, equation. So since I know this Y component is downward, I'm just gonna say minus MV2, sine theta two. 
So the choice I made here is uh, when I finish this calculation, my data is going to come out to be a positive quantity. And that is frankly the answer that's looked for here because below the horizontal is already specified. So, um, so that's the equation in the y direction. So having written that down, then uh, the check I need to do is if I have the same number of unknowns as equations. So let's just go through and check. I have m known uh, v0 given m given v1 given um, data1 given m v2 uh, v2 is not given. I'm looking for that. And cosine theta 2, not given, I'm also looking for that. And uh, in the second equation, everything here has already been included in the first equation. So I have two unknowns, two equations, it should be solvable. So the, um, the rest of the steps from here are algebra. And um, as a, so one type of algebra that you do a lot in this class is a solving system of equations. And this is also one of those types of algebraic calculation. So hopefully you've gotten enough practice, you feel kind of getting more proficient at it if you weren't already. Um, and uh, let's see, what do I wanna do here? Um, so here I'll just illustrate what I normally do. And what I normally do is a substitution. It, uh, um, there are, depending on the situation, there are other methods that could give you answer more quickly um, and more, or more elegantly. The reason I default to substitution so often is because it works like 99% of the time without too much more effort. So um, this is what I'm going to do. So I do look at the equation carefully to see um, what's easier to eliminate and I do kind of do it deliberately. And what I see here is, especially in this uh, second equation here, it's going to be much, well, very easy for me to solve for V2, partly because the left-hand side is zero. So once I solve it for V2, then I get a tool that I can use to eliminate V2 elsewhere. And here, I don't really have a preference between V2 and theta 2 I need to solve them both. So I will uh, solve this equation for V2 first so that I can use a substitution. So for V2. So um, that means I'm moving this term to the left-hand side and dividing up by m sine theta 2. When I do that, I get V2 is equal to m's cancel out, uh, V1 sine theta 1 over sine theta 2. All right, so I have this, uh, that's my expression for V2. And once I have theta 2, then uh, this is a, a formula I'll come back to, to actually solve for V2 as then get a numerical value for V2. Um, all right, so that's done. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to substitute. I have this expression here. Everything here is known except for V2 and theta 2. So once I substitute in V2, then it'll be an equation in terms of only theta 2, which I can then solve for. So um, substitute. Then this is what I end up with. M V0 is equal to M V1 cosine theta 1 plus M, and then that quantity there. V1 sine theta 1 over cosine theta, not cosine, what am I doing? No. I'm not even that sleepy. <laughs> sine theta 2 times now cosine theta 2. And I can simplify this a little bit to uh, cut down on unnecessary algebra. M's cancel out. That's what I was saying earlier that um, uh, masses being the same will make our algebra easier. And um, let me rewrite this combination as something that I know it'll be already. It's gonna be one over tangent theta two. 
Uh, expressing this ratio in terms of a single trigonometric function makes our job easier later because then what we can do is um, we can solve this equation for this uh, single trigonometric function tangent of theta 2 and then imagine applying arc tangent to the thing. In fact, I think that's what I will do. I will take this uh, entire equation and just uh, solve it for a tangent of theta 2. So uh, let me write up a cleaned up version first so that I don't make a mistake. Um, so a cleaned up version of that equation, uh, changing as little as possible is V0 is equal to V1 cosine theta 1 plus V1 um, sine theta 1 divided by tangent theta 2. So I guess I will move this term over to the left-hand side and just take reciprocals of both sides and then uh, do that. So let me just do one step at a time. Moving this over and just swapping the two sides, then this is what I end up with. V1 sine theta 1 over tangent theta 2 is equal to V0 minus V1 cosine theta 1. And then I'm just going to take reciprocal of both sides to get tangent theta 2 on the left-hand side. And when I do that, let me just make a little bit of room here. Yeah, I think it'll be fine. <laughs> uh, then I have tan tangent theta 2 over V1 sine theta 1 is equal to, did I do this right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, is one over v naught minus v one cosine theta one, and I guess what I can literally imagine doing now is moving this. Oops. Um, I thought. Well, um, moving this. over to here, replacing that one. So let me erase that one. And then, uh, so, oops. Uh, it probably would have been quicker to just rewrite it. <laughs> so this goes here. So this is the expression I have then. Tangent of theta two is equal to the ratio on the right hand side. And everything on the right hand side, uh, I have no numbers for V1, theta 1, V0. So at this point, what I probably would do is, um, what I probably would do is uh, now just to solve this for, uh, plug in the numbers, get a numerical value. Then once I have the number there, then I can uh, use the inverse trig function to say theta 2 is equal to arc tangent of that number. And one thing to be careful here is you want to confirm, double check, verify that this angle is going to be an acute angle. Because if it's not, then you have to uh, make sure your final angle is in the correct quadrant. Um, but here, I think from the picture painted, it's clear that it's going to be an acute angle. So once you have theta 2 numerically, then I'll just plug it in here numerically to get V2 numerically, making sure that you don't round it too early um, so you don't get that rounding problem. Um, yeah, the reason I switched to numbers starting from here on is I can see that uh, it's not really going to simplify. So it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to do all that algebra work for something that's not going to simplify. So, so yeah, um, th th that's uh, uh, this question. Now, one thing I want you to know is how um, I didn't use conservation of energy. And I guess uh, actually having not done this question, 
I don't know if uh, it will conserve energy or not. <laughs> um, so in this question, the question never told us that energy is conserved, which is why I am not using conservation of energy. And that's one reason. And the second is because the question gives us these two of the uh, four final parameters, conservation of momentum alone already completely specifies the physical situation. So if uh, the question were to tell you that energy is conserved, it would fall into one of the two. One, it could be giving you an um, inconsistent description as in, um, like if energy were conserved, then you couldn't get this outcome. That's one possibility. And two, it could be a redundant uh, specification as in um, you could have derived that energy is conserved without actually being told that. So, um, so in this, um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is, uh, don't um, uh, read the questions carefully and um, uh, only uh, make draw the conclusions that uh, justified by the problem wording or the situation. Okay, so that's this question. Um, I think it's one of the few situations where you have to break down your momentum into components and make sure to work out the components.